haven't subscribed my country people what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button right below the red the red button right below turn on notifications so that you can be notified every time a new video is up hi everybody welcome back to my channel i hope that you all are doing amazing and that you're staying safe and staying sane at the same time i'm super super excited about this series that i've been doing about entrepreneurship and on today's video i'm going to be speaking to you guys about five ways in which you can accumulate or in which you can you can get capital for your small startup business without having to get a big bank loan or circle loan i really hope that this video is going to be beneficial to you so please stay tuned for more of this First of all, you guys, I keep telling you that this is out of the experience I've had so far as an entrepreneur. I started my own businesses roughly two years ago uh, while I was still in employment. So for the for the past like one and a half years, I've been learning on the job as I even learned from the former employer that I had because they had started their own business and how they were running it and the things that, had, that they had learned so far in their business. So for me, doing full-time entrepreneurship, it's been four and a half months now and it's been a journey of so many ups and downs. I've learned so much that, and that is why I even decided to start this series on my channel so that I can share with you guys some of the lessons I've learned, some of the ups and downs I've had, some of the, the mistakes I've made. <laughs> So that I can help you guys not to make the same mistakes as I did, yeah? So, first of all, guys, capital is usually one of the most most um, frustrated or, or, most, or, or very, very strenuous parts of business. Many of us have very, many, very good ideas. Many of us have so many dreams about the businesses we want to start. Many of us have done our research and we have all this information about these businesses that we want to start. So the next point after you've done your research, after you've understood what niche you, you're in, after you've understood the problem that you're trying to solve, which I will do on a separate video, by the way, and I will be speaking about ways in which you can start a business that will be, will be, will enable you to create genera generational wealth or that will enable you to create or to be relevant for many years to come but for today's video as i said we are going to be speaking about capital and capital is basically the amount of money or the amount of resources or the amount of assets that you need in order to ensure that your business is running smoothly or that it's able to meet its day-to-day -day, uh, operations as well as annual profit uh, from the sales of the products or the services you're offering. So capital is usually a strenuous subject because many people, many people at the point of starting their businesses, they just have an idea. Uh, you're a dreamer, you have this big dream that you really want to actualize or you've, you've done research about this particular problem that you want to solve and you feel like you have all the information, you've gathered enough information to be able to just dive into the deep end and to start. So the next step is usually fine, I have all these ideas, I have all these dreams, I have all, this, all that vision I have in my mind, but how do I ensure that I am able to actualize the vision that I have or that I'm able to, you know, buy the products I want to buy or whatever it is that you want to do. So first of all, you could either be in the retail business Business or you're, you're either in the products or services business and you see the thing is it's usually very different for both for both um, it's very different for both industries and today I want to specify or to specifically speak about the products business you see for products you have to have money to go and buy this particular product so that you can be able to sell it so that's the first thing and that the difference between the products and services businesses is that as a service you can start with absolutely zero bob I promise you you can start a service business with absolutely zero shillings depending on the industry that you're in but now that we're speaking about products let's start so you probably need you've done your research and you've understood that to, for me to be able to buy these products that I want to come and resell to the market I'm going to need let's say 20,000 bob but at the moment you don't have that so one of the ways the first 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 way in which you can be able to accumulate or to get capital for your business I like to call them the short-term investors so short-term investors in this case these are people who you approach you share with them your business plan, you share with them your business proposal, and you have to be keen on telling them that you do not want them to come in as long-term investors, but as short-term investors. So a short-term investor, in my own words, is a person who will come in, inject money or inject resources into your business for a certain agreed amount of time. Let's say you have decided as a business owner or, or as an entrepreneur that you just want an investor to invest in the first year of your business. That's 365 days from the onset of your business. So you'll go 
people approach a short-term investor tell them this is your business plan this is your uh, trajectory this is where you see your business headed and this is the amount of money that you need them to be able to inject in your business so what does this make you it gives you a functional role in your business for example you'll take the ceo chief executive officer role or you'll take the coo chief operations officer role or the CFO, whatever role you're going to take, meaning you'll be running the day-to-day -day operations of your business, but you will have an overall sort of director for your business for that one particular year. What does this mean? They they have um, they have the authority to to be part of the decision making of the business they have the authority to be part of uh signing the documents whatever documents are needed to be signed um they have the authority to be able to just make they they have they have a role to play in your business now that they've injected injected money they're not just there for the money bit they can be able to advise you on where things you should do whether this business is headed the right direction or not so a short-term investor what happens is within the one year if the investor had invested fifty thousand bob for example you they need to have recovered their fifty thousand shillings as well as interest upon an agreed percentage so let's say you decide that this investor will be getting three percent or ten percent of every profit that's of every amount of profit made per month so it means by the end of the year they'll have made um ten percent each month let's say if you're making 20,000 profit every month. That means they'll make 2,000 bob every month. So at the end of the year, they'll have regained their 50,000 bob plus 24,000 worth of investment profit. Do you understand me? So then that's the first person. That's a short-term investor. And I think a short-term investor is important too when you're looking to when you're looking to, you see, at times you really just, you, you're you not in the business of looking for an investor for long term because you just want someone to be able to help you to, to kickstart your business. So that's when a, sh a short-term investor comes in. That's the first way in which you can get money for your startup business. And these short-term investors could be absolutely anyone. It could be a friend. You could approach a friend who's probably in a better financial state than you are right now. Explain to them your dream. Explain to them your vision. And they'll, if they're interested in seeing your uh, dream come to a reality, they will help you with that. It could be a family member. It could be a, just someone who you've approached from absolutely nowhere. Probably you did a cold call and you saw that this person is looking to invest their money in some way. And you, you're sure you can guarantee them return on investments if they invest in your business so it could be absolutely anyone so that's the first person the second kind of way in which you can gain capital for your business is definitely through your savings uh, I think before you start any business let's say you're from employment let's start from a, an employment point of view if you're in employment and your vision is to start your own business or to be able to be an entrepreneur, you need to plan ahead. You need to understand your deadlines. You need to time yourself. Let's say you'll say, I'll be in employment for 10 years. And within these 10 years, I look to have invested or to have saved around let's say three million so that by the time i'm leaving my employment or my formal job i can be able to start my business with a good amount of money so that's that's savings are usually a very safe bet because one you are you if you are disciplined enough you can be able to accumulate so much money for your business without having to involve anyone else or without having to stress stress about uh investors writing a business plan uh stressing about going to pitch your ideas to people who will not even believe in your dream so savings is a way in which you can be able to be your whole pass on your whole your whole you know your 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 own self your money is you no know, you know where your money is going because you believe in your own dreams and listen if you do not believe in your own dreams then nobody else will ever do that so if you're in employment and you're planning to be an entrepreneur one day give yourself a timeline work with short-term goals and work with long-term goals if you're planning to stay in your job for the next two years you need to understand do research about your business understand by the time it's two years from now uh, keeping keeping in mind that there'll be inflation and there'll be in change change of economy but you need to understand by the time two years is getting there I want to start this business let's say it's uh, starting my own clothing line I will need this amount of money because this will cater for my tailors it will cater for importing my, my material if it's sourcing locally it will cater for machinery and all of that stuff so you need to understand how much money are you looking to start your business with so that even as you get the amount of money you're looking to start your business with you can be able to to work backwards so if you you need five million to be able to start this business that you've always dreamed about you need to understand fine I need five million and I want to quit my job in the next two years so you divide the five million
don't divide by the number of days you'll be you'll be having at your workplace and the amount of money you need to save every month for you to be able to actualize your dream come the two years you see so and always remember that we always told by financial specialists that you should always pay yourself first and paying yourself first means investing your money or saving your money so that you can be able to you know delayed gratification whereby you might not enjoy that money now per se but you know where your money is going and you know the kind of vision you have for your money so that's the second thing savings I, and i always say savings is is is, is, a, is a sure bet because at the end of the day sometimes these banks or these circles might not be able to fund your 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 um so guys uh the third way in which you can be able to get capital for your startup business or your small business is grants do you know you guys actually discovered that in Kenya, the government usually offers certain grants to, I think, a certain number of youths every year. So they require you to go to that uh, uh, website. I'm, I'll need to confirm the details of the website and I'm going to be leaving the details of the website below. And you share your business proposal. You share your the amount of money you need to be able to actualize that business. And you sh if, if you, you submit your, your request or your application, if they find your, your idea fit or if, if they feel like it's going to create employment for many youth and all of that, they're going to grant you a certain amount of money that will be able to fund your business. And I think the amount ranges from even uh, 300,000 all the way to 2 million if I'm not wrong. I'll need to confirm that, but grants are a very good way for you to be able to actualize your dream without having to take a loan or having to get an investor to do that for you see a grant is usually money that you do not have to pay back per se you see what happens is of course once they give you a grant they'll be able to have to come follow through whether you you actualize your dream whether you you use the money sorry whether you use the money as you had said you would use it it doesn't mean that you'll get free money to be able to uh, embezzle it and just mismanage it and use it for your own good no 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 once they give you a grant they have to come back and check out whether you've done what you you required what you were required to do basically it will have some form of monitoring but it does not mean that you have to pay back the amount of money that they had given you so many people did not know about this i actually did not even know about this myself we also have so many other funds that the government has started to be able to empower the youth to be able to start their own businesses such that such as the youth fund and the youth fund gives the youth uh who come together either, either as a group or as individuals who have a dream or who have a business plan that they want to actualize they give you all the way from uh from a hundred thousand bob and you're able to pay i think within a year or three years according to the contract that you'll sign with the youth fund so there's so many so many so many resources out there we also have so many ngos out here who are willing to fund youth who have ideas that are going to transform the society or youth who have ideas that are going to create to solve a certain problem that society that the society is facing whether it's unemployment whether it's um drug abuse whatever it is the society could be facing if you have a business idea or if you have a strategy that you think would be able to solve that problem that the the the, the vice that the society is facing is facing there's so many ngos out here that are willing to fund that and as i had said i'll leave all the description all the links to to these different um, uh, companies that have come across that are willing to do that for you in my description box so that you can have a look at that. So the other, for, the fourth way in which you can uh, gather capital or accumulate capital for your business without having to take a loan is through goodwill and family and friends. Um, I think this is a very critical part. I think sometimes we usually we usually tend to neglect the people that are closest to us, yet we don't we not think that these are the people who could even help us in one way or the other. So one of one of the ways in which you can do this is have a solid business plan. Once you have a solid business plan, it would be e even easier for you to go pitch to your parents, to your aunties, to your uncles who are probably also in business and they understand the struggle of gaining capital or they've accumulated or they've grown their business to a certain point whereby they can even be able to sponsor or to mentor upcoming businesses. So your family and friends could really, really come a long way for you when you're starting your own business. It could be any amount. Imagine you can get a well-wisher who, who will even give you a thousand bob and that a thousand bob will make a whole lot of difference in your business. As long as you're disciplined enough to be able to manage your finances well and to be able to, to take your money where it needs to go, it will work out, I promise you. So the thing is, of course, once you have the business plan, you need to understand how much money will you need to be able to take your dream from, uh, to make your dream come into come into to become a reality so once you see the the budget you have once you know the amount of capital you'll need approach your family start with your parents your parents could even if they won't give you the full amount of money they could give you a certain boost that would make a whole lot of difference approach your family uh, go to your friends your very close circle and i'm very keen on this because first of all not every person you call friend is 
out here to see you succeed or out here to see you prosper in life sometimes you will go share your very intricate or your very very intimate dreams or your very intimate vision and you find someone who will take your dream maybe they have the finances and you don't and they will run with it and they will act as if you did not even exist so when i say your friends i mean your very close circle of friends people who you know you can trust people who you know have the best interest of have your best interest at heart you need to be very wise for you to be able to to know who uh, to distinguish between who wants what for you and who I mean who wants the best for you and who doesn't want the best for you But the first thing would be your family your family I think and they know always want the best for you and they always want to see you succeed because your success is their success So if you can be able to approach your family ask them for whatever amount of money they are willing to to share with you You see the thing is uh, so many people do harambees to go uh, study abroad or all those things but sometimes you, you're even shy to even go out there and ask your family to be able to support your dreams so that you, you can actualize it and yet that dream might even become you know you might even become the the financial um support system for your family so if your family is uh united and they're willing to support your dream then you have all it takes to be able to just get your capital and you know what you could either decide to pay them back or you could decide to just bless them in one way or the other maybe buy them gifts once once your business has taken off maybe you can buy them gifts or if you're able to um if you're able to even make it public such that they can buy shares in your business then the better for you uh and the final way in which you can accumulate profits uh, sorry the final way in which you can accumulate capital for your business is through plowing back profits guys <laughs> If there's one thing I've really learned when it comes to business is about delayed gratification. As a business person, you need to become very, very, very conscious about how you spend how you spend your money. Every single coin matters. You see, when you're employed, it's very different because you know at the end of the month, whether I work so hard or I don't, I'm still going to get this amount of money because I have a contract that I've signed and because I, I am entitled to that salary. But when you get into business, you understand that there's no there's no entitlement here, sis. You will get the money that you work for. If you decide to sleep and just wish and keep wishing and just praying without actions, imagine you will suffer at the end of the, at the, end of the month. So that's the other thing I'm learning. Plowing back profits is one of the best ways in which you can be able to um, get as much money or get as much capital for your business. And plowing back profits means, let's say you've started your business with 5,000 shillings this month. You went to bought clothes at Gikomba and you've come and sold them and you've made uh, 10,000, meaning you've made 5,000 on top. So as a, as a wise business person, because you understand the struggle that you have when it comes to accumulating your capital, you will, go, you will use probably maybe 2,000 bob from the capital you've made and plow back the rest of the 3,000 bob to become, to ensure that your initial capital has grown from 5,000 shillings to 8,000 shillings. You understand? So that means the next time you're going to buy your stock, you have a larger, you have, you're, you're able to buy more stock for your business which means that you'll be able to make even more profits because you'll sell more things at the end of the month so what i mean by delayed, delayed gratification is basically that for for the first one year or even maybe two years of your business you'll not be able to pay yourself as much as you'd want to pay yourself maybe you'll be able to to make ends meet and break even in the sense that you're able to do pay your bills and you know survive but you'll not be able to thrive until your business has taken off completely. So you need to understand that you need to have discipline and to be patient enough to watch your, your business grow. A business is basically like a baby. I'm not a mom, but I understand you, you have to be patient with your kids. When you, get a, when you give back to your baby, you cannot force your baby to start working and it's, they're just four months. You understand? Every business has different milestones every month you you cross every month you jump from one milestone to one milestone to the other maybe the first time you're struggling to get capital the next time you have capital now you're struggling to you know uh buy the stock and understand exactly why you need you need your money to go the next time you'll probably be struggling to so it reinvest your money the next time you'll struggle to find systems and to structure your business in such a way that it can run even while you're not there physically or you know as in business is such an interesting topic and every time i speak about business i get excited because i am very passionate about entrepreneurship and ensuring that people are able to be financially independent and to just live and 
not survive you know so plowing back profits as i said is one way of ensuring that you have delayed gratification and it's one way of growing your capital to a point where it can be able to stand on itself and you can start to pay yourself good money so thank you so much for watching my five ways in which you can accumulate capital for your startup business without having to take a loan i will do so many videos about different things we will talk about loans and how to ensure that you take a loan right so that it can work for you and not you working for your loan we'll do so so many videos about business and just ensuring that you can become a financially independent or a financial financially stable human being so thank you so much for watching this video i really hope that you've learned a lot from it because i had so so much fun shooting it um in case you haven't subscribed my country people what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button right below the red the red button right below turn on notifications so that you can be notified every time a new video is up comment comment tell me what this video has meant to you are you a startup business are you planning to start your business do you think that this video was beneficial to you please tell me all of that and let's let's grow this channel my desire is to get to 10,000 subscribers by end of 2020 <laughs> And I've just seen that we have 12 weeks left and I believe that we can do this. So thank you so much for the love this far. I love you guys with all my heart and I really thank God for each and every one of you. So stay safe, stay sane. Let's grow our businesses and let's ensure that we just become financially independent human beings and we can be able to live our lives in abundance. And I think you, you, the Bible also says that Christ came so that we may have life and have it in abundance. There's no for surviving here. We need to thrive. So till next time, goodbye.